high grade elevens. Let's start with 9.2 under the Euclidean geometry section of this paper. It is given that in the diagram below, DF is the diameter of the circle. Okay, so DF cuts the circle in half. The center of the circle is O. DF intersects at H. And then they say DF is perpendicular to EG, which means where they cross, that angle is 90. So that's given there. It says and GF are drawn and then angle EGF, that angle is 55. That was given. Question 9.2.1. It says determine giving reasons the size of angle D. So angle D is here on the circumference. So I'm going to look for theorems that speaks about the circumference. So there's this theorem. It looks like a butterfly that says this angle is equal to this angle, angles in the same segment, only if this is on the circumference, this is on the circumference, and this is on the circumference of the circle. Eh? So there must be the circle like that going through those points. Then we have angles in the same segment. There is our circle. Eh? I'm looking for something like that. Do you see here D goes to E and D goes to F? This is the circumference. Then I go up here. Do you see? So if I start by D and I go down to E, F, E is on the circumference, eh? So here's E and this is F. Then I go to E, F again and I go somewhere else. So from E, I can now go to G. From F, I can go to G. Do you see there's the butterfly? And all four points are on the circumference. D is on the circumference. G is, E is, and F. So that means angle D is equal to angle G. So angle D is 55. So I'm going to write angle D is 55. The reason is angles in the same segment. And there you have two marks, eh? So one for 55, one for angles in the same set. So D is now 55. We put it in our diagram. Our next question is question B. Calculate the size of angle O2. Let's label this is angle O2. They said O is the center of the circle. So because O2 is at the center, I'm going to look for something like that. This angle O2 is at the center. So that's twice the angle over here. This is on the circumference, so that this must be the circumference. So they must actually, the circle must go through these points. Let's go to our circle. Because I'm looking for O2, I go to O2 and I go to the circumference, okay? So now I have this part over here. I'm looking for this part over here. I'm going to start here by F and E again, and I'm going to go to the circumference. So can you see that E can go to G? And F can also go to G. And there I have angle at center, twice angle at circumference. It's just a little bit upside down. So this one over here is twice this one over here. So... This one at the center is always the bigger angle, and it's double the size of this angle here. So in our diagram, this angle here is 55. So then this one is 55 times 2, which is 110. So then for number B, angle O2 is 110. The reason is angle at center, twice angle at circumference. That's also for two marks. One mark for the value, one mark for your raise. And then remember, you've worked O2 out. Let's go put O2 in. So that is 110. Our next question is number C here. The value of E2. E2 is this angle over here. So can you see E2 is actually in a triangle. Let's not forget about our grade 8 and 9 work. There's the triangle. So I'm going to use... Angles in a triangle. So let's see if I can work out some of these angles. Do you agree? 
this angle here is also 90 angles on a straight line. This one here is 70 angles on a straight line. Therefore, this angle here is 180 minus 90 minus 70. Okay, so I'm going to write this down. So for number C, I'm going to say this angle here, this is angle H2, eh? that's 90. So I'm going to say angle H2 is also 90 because of angles on a straight line over there. Then I'm going to say 01 plus 110. So these two together must also give me 180. Angles on a straight line. So angle 01 is 180 minus 110. So 01 is actually 70. So then I could put my 70 in there. I am in this triangle. Okay. So then I say in that triangle. So let's write that down. So then I say in triangle EHO. So in that triangle, I'm going to say 90 plus 70 plus angle E2 must give me 180. Angles in a triangle. So therefore, angle E2 is 180 minus 90 minus 70. So E2 is 20. Okay, so there we worked out E2. They will give you a mark for working out the 20 and for one of your reasons, which is angles in the triangle. Number D says calculate the size of angle E3. E3 is this angle over here. E3 is in a small triangle. E3 is in this triangle where we have O2. So do you remember in the information they said is our center? So let me take out this triangle with center O. There is O. O is the center. E is on the circumference. F is on the circumference. This line from O to E is called a radius. This line from O to F is also called a radius. And we know that they are all equal in length. So can you see the isosceles triangle? I'm going to use that to calculate E3 over there. So I'm going to write down number D. So I'm going to say OE is equal to OF because of radii. Okay, then I'm going to say therefore angle E3 is 180 minus the top angle. And to get a base angle, you divide by 2. That will give me 35 for each base angle. And that's how you work out that one. So let's see how we would mark this. For saying these two are equal, for dividing by two, for your method, and for your answer. 9.2.2 says, determine the length of OH. So determine the length of OH. Let's highlight OH. So determine the length of OH if the diameter of the circle is 10 units. So DF is the diameter. This whole diameter is 10 units, eh? So that whole diameter is 10 units. And then it says GE is 9,4 units. So let's go highlight GE. GE is this line over here. This whole line is 9,4 units. Okay, so that whole line. So the whole line is 9,4 units. That's what the whole line, eh? So grade 11s. The first theorem we learned in grade 11, whenever we're working with lengths, you might have to use, or you must use theorem number one that says line from center is perpendicular to chord and bisects the chord. So if this is the center and this angle is 90, it means that this is equal to that. Okay, so I'm going to look for something like that in my diagram. So do you see here's the center and I want to go somewhere where there's a 90. If I had to move from O, I would go to H because H has a 90. So that means here where there's a 90, this is 90. It means it cuts this whole line here in half. So that means that this is equal to that. 
But now we must remember this whole length is 9,4. So to get this part, I'm going to say 9,4 divided by 2. And to get that part, I'm going to say 9,4 divided by 2. If I do that, I get this part to be 4,7 and this part to be 4,7. So I'm just going to explain again. This whole line was 9,4. So if I want only this part here on the left, if I want only that side, I say 9,4 divided by 2 and I got 4,7. And if I only want that part, I do the same. I say the whole line divided by 2 and this is 4,7. So that is what we've done there. Okay, so so far that is what we have. But remember grade 11s, we are actually looking for this line OH over A. This is the line I'm looking for. So if I want to use Pythagoras, I need a right angle triangle. This is a right angle triangle over here. But to use Pythagoras, you need two known sides. And so far in that triangle, I only have the 4,7. So I need another side. So I'm going to go to the information again. It said that the diameter is 10 units. If the diameter is 10 units, it means that any radius in the circle is half of this length. So if you have a diameter and it's 10 units, then this part is the radius. Then this is 5 and this is 5. So anywhere where there's a radius, that is 5. Anywhere where there's another radius, that is 5. That is 5. So any radius in the circle is then 5 units. So do you see here's the center? The center goes to E. So there's a radius. That means OE is 5 units. I am now in this triangle over here. So can you see if you take out that triangle? This is 90. This is 4,7. And this is 5. So this is the hypotenuse, eh? So to work out this, I can use Pythagoras. So this is H, this is O, and this is E. So I'm going to say OH squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared minus the other side squared Pythagoras. And that is how I'm going to work out OH. Okay, so that was our plan. But now we have to write everything down. Okay, let's start. What was the first thing we said? We first said that this is 4,7 and that is 4,7. Eh? We first said that this line is equal to that line. So let's write that down. I'm going to write EH is equal to HG. They are equal and that is because line from center is perpendicular to chord. Then we said, therefore this side is 4,7. So then I'm going to say therefore EH is 9,4, the whole side, divided by 2. So I got that to be 4,7. Okay, there's the 4,7. Then I said, if the diameter is 10 units, then the radius in this circle is 5 units. And then I said, therefore, this line OE is a radius. So OE is 5 units because it's a radius. Eh? That's my reason. Okay, then I said, I am now in triangle. So I am in this right angle triangle. And remember, I'm working out OHA. So in triangle EHO. OH squared, I'm doing Pythagoras, is equal to the hypotenuse, the longer side. Eh? This is the longer side opposite the 90 degree angle. OH squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared minus 4,7, so the other side squared. The reason is Pythag, eh? For that, so I get this to be 2,89. I get that to be 2,89. So to get OH by itself, I square root that side and that side, and I get this to be 
seven units. So there I have OH. OH is 1,7 units. And that's how you solve that. Let's mark this, eh? So how would you get your four marks? So you would get your first mark for saying So for saying the 4 comma 7 and line from center is perpendicular to court. Then for the 5 and the radii. So for the 5 and the reason, that's one mark. Then for using Pythagoras and getting the answer, that's one mark. So that's how you get four marks over the grade 11s. And that is this question.